Director, and thank you for the uh, opportunity to uh, talk in this uh, symposium. Yeah. Um, the OCE asked me to uh, talk about the neglected tropical disease in Indonesia, and some of the disease already explained by previous uh, speakers. Yeah. And then <clears throat> I repeat again, what is the neglected tropical diseases? And again, I agree with the previous uh, speaker that uh, neglected means that uh, usually it is uh, mainly affect for the poor and marginalized the populations. Actually, the neglected is, uh, the question is, the neglected one is the disease or is this the people? So I'm afraid that it's going to be the second. The people is uh, neglected because uh, they are not really important, maybe, right? Okay, and then, again, this is the 17, 17 diseases that's already claimed by the WHO as a, a, a neglected tropical disease. So they claim there are 17. For the bacteria, there are at least four. Borrelia ulcer, it is caused by the mycobacteria. Leprosis by, uh, caused by mycobacterium leprae. Trachoma is uh, mycochlamydia. Uh, Yours is the uh, Trypanema virus, is dengue and rabies. And rabies is common in Indonesia also. Dengue also common in Indonesia. And Brudozoa, almost all of this disease, as already mentioned by the uh, previous speakers. And there are another disease, other disease that is uh, also uh, considered as uh, neglected tropical diseases, like uh, uh, chronic superlative otitis media. So maybe we know that in a very rural area, many children that has the uh, discharge from their ear. Melisotoma is caused by uh, one of them is fungus, the other is bacteria. And also nodding syndrome, odoconiosis, cabies, snake bite, and strongholidosis. Yep. Now, <clears throat> The characteristic of the neglected tropical disease itself is uh, difficult and costly to manage diagnosis. Sometimes the diagnosis tools is too expensive or it is not uh, 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 easy to do because uh, it needs a resource that is a sophisticated machine, for example, or well-trained uh, well, uh, health worker. Then it is not available in the marginalized population and in the remote area. And then burden is uh, poorly understood. The burden is poorly understood is because actually there is no report. We know the neglected disease if only some people, some patient come to the clinic and then we diagnose. Otherwise, we never know that there is a such disease that is suffering our populations, right? And then lack appropriate control tools Relatively lower investment in research and development. That's it is true, because uh, usually government or uh, the donor usually they have a special interest for the um, disease that, for example, tuberculosis, malaria, is AIDS, for example, but not for the other disease that is like uh, caused by worm or by the fungus or other uh, small small thing. They thought it is not really good to be uh, invest for research. And then this one I have mentioned before. They are usually live in remote rural area and also uh, limited access to diagnosis. <clears throat> and this is the fact that almost all of the country with low income has uh, at least five neglected tropical diseases uh, circulating in their territory. And then worldwide, it is, uh, it was, it, there are 149 countries and territories that are affected by the NTDs. And this is the most important. They are killed many people actually, more than 500 people per year. So actually, mm, we cannot say it is to be as uh, proper to be ignored because of the uh, impact, right? And then for the, Loss because of the NTD, uh, this is quite high. 57 million years of life loss uh, count for these uh, uh, diseases. And then <clears throat> sometimes the individuals, because they are in remote area and they are poor and they have a very low hygiene and sanitation, usually they are affected or infected by more than one uh, parasite or more than one uh, disease because of that one. Yeah. 
and then the treatment for the treatment, the allocation budget from the gov from the government sometimes is very low. Here uh, we have to highlight it is less than 50 cents US dollar per person per year. So it is very small comparing the other disease that is uh, uh, mm, uh, uh, famous or notorious because of that. Yeah. Another problem is because uh, this neglect this tropical disease usually re uh, related with a factor ecology and management. So uh, almost 60% uh, of this neglected infectious disease or tropical disease is uh, uh, factor-borne disease. And then because of that, the uh, management or control of the vector will be uh, the best uh, approach to, to, to control or to manage the, the NTDs in the developing countries. <clears throat> uh, and then I like also to highlight the neglected zoonotic diseases. Neglected zoonotic diseases actually is a subset of the neglected tropical disease, but this one has their own characteristic because uh, naturally it is transmitted from the vertebrate animal to human and vice versa. So in other words, the disease will affect the human and also uh, vertebrate. Example here is rabies, rabies that is uh, caused by the virus, and the other disease, echinococcosis, teniasis, foodborne trematodesis, human African trichosnosoma is caused by the uh, protozoa. Okay. And then, uh, related with this neglected zone disease, I'd like to remind you, there is uh, one concept about the uh, how Zoonotic disease can be emerged in uh, developing countries, as I like in Indonesia, because uh, there is the change in population, human population, also change of acceptance and of technology, and also uh, change in the sociocultural organization. Because of these three factors, then it might be push the urbanizations, and also because population increase, the technology increase, then there is uh, agricultural intensification. So meaning that uh, we are starting to opening land to, for a rice field, for example, or for other agricultural purposes. And then because of this urbanization, agricultural intensification, then there is uh, habitat alterations. Then this habitat alteration may, uh, this tree, urbanization, agricultural, and habitat alteration may re result to the change of the vector or reservoir. The vector or reservoir might be domestication, meaning that uh, before, before of this change, the vector is far away from our neighborhood. But because we are now moving to their habitat, actually, or we open the land, then they are very close with us. And then also wildlife transport might be happen because we are uh, able to go to the wood, go to the forest, and uh, find some wildlife to be consumed, for example. And then human encroachment, meaning that the population increase, then the human need a uh, uh, life, need the uh, housing. So they starting to change from the wood, from other uh, other uh, ec uh, ecosystem, other habitat of the vectors become uh, become uh, uh, um, for place for living or for housing, and then, and then because of that, the emergence of uh, the host pathogen dynamic has happened, and then after that we know that there is a disease emergent because the vector is uh, very close to us and also the habitat change. The vector usually in the forest now come to our neighbor and then uh, the emergent zoonosis is, is happened. For example, this one. Yeah. This is a wood. This is a rice field. And this is our housing. And maybe this is a farm. So if the housing increase, then the rice field will be uh, disappear and then the vectors or other uh, insect or other mosquito for example then it's going to move to other place and then if we have a, a plan to 
again uh, make a rice field. So we can use this forest as a rice field, for example. So again, the habitat is changed. So after that, the vector from the rice field will come to the wood and vice versa. In that case, the zoonosis emerging diseases come because of the uh, uh, disturbance of the balance of the ecosystem our in uh, uh, surround of our neighborhood, for example. And then two factors, population, it might be size populations and also distribution. And for economic, we may have the degree of consumption, we need more food, and then the degree of the technology uh, prevailing, so we now using tractors instead of the uh, cow, for example, that is going to be effect of the condition of the soil environment, and this social environment and natural physical environment will affect the population of health. So this concept might be the, uh, the thing that is uh, underlying of the zoonotic emergent disease in our case, because this, this happened in our country and in other developing countries. Yeah. Then, for the INTD in Indonesia, the Ministry of Health declaring only five in 2010, they claim that we have only five neglected tropical disease out of 70 that is claimed by the WHO. The five is leprosy, lymphatic filariasis, sostomasiasis, soil transmitted helmin, and also bambrosia or yos. Yeah. So I will explain maybe uh, only two or three because uh, for Cystosomiasis, lymphatic filariasis, and soil transmitted helmets has been already uh, discussed by, uh, by Professor Alexis before, right? So, not to be duplicated. Yeah. So, for leprosy in Indonesia, in 2000s, year 2000, the prevalence is less than 1 per 10,000, actually. But uh, in 2009, it is apparently it is increased. So 14 provinces are affected and 160 districts are reported having leprosy case and the prevalence rate is now increased more than 1 per 10,000 populations. Now, uh, three endemic indicators is uh, pointed out there. The proportion of grade 2 disabilities increase become 10%. The proportion of a child case is increase become 12% among the populations, and the proportion of the multibacillary case, multibacillary case is the worst uh, leprosy uh, that we have, that we know. It is uh, contribute to 82% of uh, the population. So to remind you about the uh, uh, grading of the disability, you know that the grade one is no anesthesia, no visible deformity, uh, basically, grid one is there is no deformity. Grid one is uh, anesthesia present, but no visible deformity in the hand and feet. Grid two is visible deformity or damage in the feet, and also for the eye. So basically, for the uh, leprosy deformity, leprosy disability grading system, we use the deformity in hand, feet, and the eyes. For the eyes, there is no eyes problem in grid zero. Grid one is uh, eye problem due to leprosy uh, present, for example, the low vision or uh, low vision. And then the grid two is included also lag of thalmus. Lag of thalmus meaning that the eyelid cannot uh, close properly. Because of that, the, the eye will become dry and very easy to be infected. Iridocyclitis this is a uh, infection of the iris and also the uh, anterior camera uh, space and the corneal opacity. So, judging from that one, so the grade two, meaning the one that is uh, has very severe eyes uh, uh, disability and hand and feet, is uh, around ten percent the proportion in Indonesia, and for the speakers that's from overseas and also the um, participants from overseas, I have to uh, explain that this is Sumatra Island, this is Java, and we are here now. 
And this is Bali, you know that one. And this is Nusa Tenggara. This is Borneo or Kalimantan, Sulawesi, and this is Papua, and this is Maluku. So the red one, uh, the, 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 the area with the red in color have a, a high burden. The, it is more than 10 per 10, 100,000, including in Sin and Java, Central Java, West Java, and also Jakarta there, but not in Jogja here. Okay. Aceh is quite high, Sulawesi, Maluku, and also Papua. Yeah, I think the highest one is uh, this one, the, the, the number there. This is the nominal, the actual number, and this is the, uh, uh, the um, prevalence, 15.82 per 100,000, right? So in Papua, the, the nominal is very low comparing with the Java, but because they have uh, small populations, so in Papua, the incidence is 40 per 100,000. So it is quite high. Yeah. So leprosy is still our problem now. And this is a leprosy trend in Indonesia from 2000 to 2008. Again, this is the, the case, the prevalence. This is the detection rate that we able to report. And this is the multi cases. And the multi cases meaning the worst leprosy that uh, happened. And this is the disability and the child affected leprosy. So by year by year, from 2000 to 2008, it is tend to be increased again for the leprosy. Yeah. The current problem with leprosy, I think this problem horrified is the uh, early case detection. Because uh, in many cases, even the uh, health worker that is provisioned by the worker, they are not able to, uh, to recognize the clinical symptoms of leprosy itself. And then the development of more effective therapy, we have MDT that is, recognized, that is uh, introduced by the WHO, but we are, we are obeying the, the, the recommendation we have, WHO, but still the prevalence is, is still high. And also the immunopathologies of the nerve damage, not yet clearly understood, and also the management of chronic uh, Erythema nodosum leprosum, or immuno, uh, uh, when when the bacteria is not there, sometimes the the patient have the immune response that is uh, short immune response. Then they have this immuno uh, this uh, like erythema nodosum leprosum. And also the last thing is developing a more effective vaccine because we are relying now uh, for the leprosy, we rely on BCG, but apparently BCG is not really protective for us from the leprosy. And this is the report from the five uh, districts in Indonesia. Subang is in Java, and this is in East Java and in South Sulawesi. And they reported in 2012 that the disability grade two in these five regions is around 48%, meaning that almost half of the leprosy patients become disabled. And they have activity limitations because um, almost 28% has severe activity limitations. And then they also have limitation in social participation, around 9%. And they also have stigma. This is the problem because 35% have the stigma when they are, have the uh, leprosy. Uh, for example, of the stigma here is, for example here, almost 50% leprosy patients have caused, they saying that it caused the same, caused uh, embarrassing or others. And then almost 4% is become divorced and miscellaneous other is then no able to marry, especially for women, almost 10%. They cannot have a uh, spouse because uh, they have the uh, leprosy. <clears throat> and then problem of the marriage is happen for almost 40% of the patient. So meaning that there are many social problems because of the leprosy uh, correlate with the uh, stigma. Okay, 
and this is the only uh, diagnostic that we have now for the leprosy. Basically, we rely on the microscopic staining using Kinyon or Zell Nielsen or Fat Faraco. Here is the red is the uh, um, acid fast bacilli, and for this one, this is one of our patient that is has bacterial index for plus four. Okay. And for the treatment itself, WHO already recommended very good uh, multi-drug treatment for the uh, leprosy, and we have also uh, follow the follow the uh, WHO recommendation for the Basi bacillary. We usually the two drugs, rivabicin and dapson, for six months. And for multi bacillary, usually we have uh, we give the rifampicin, clobazimin, and dapson for 12 months. But basically, actually, though it is 12 months, there is a political thing because the recommendation, the real recommendation, is for two two years, 24 months. But here in Indonesia, only applied for 12 months because what? The one of the purposes, if the basin after. Uh, 12 months still in the register, so meaning the incidence of prevalence is still high. So they are stopping in 12 months and they release them. So the record is already released or released from treatment or it is already cured. Right, yeah. Okay. And other drug, for example, obloxacin, it is already uh, mentioned here. There is a one clinical trial that I cite here. The they seems that uh, the ovloxacin comparing with the MDT have a similar uh, efficacious and then view relapse after they release from treatment. And this is another, uh, another uh, clinical trial that we already uh, uh, read in uh, many journals. Three, at least three clinical trials reported here saying that the rifampicin and ofloxacin is quite, uh, rifampicin ofloxacin is quite effective, comparable with the multi-drug therapy that is uh, uh, introduced by the WHO. However, we have to, uh, we have to, uh, uh, to be concerned, concerned about the uh, inappropriate regimen, because sometimes uh, uh, we know that uh, 12 months during 12 months enrolling in therapy, sometimes it's very boring for the patients. So the compliance may be the problem after that. Yeah. So this inappropriate regimen and compliance that is very pure among the patient might uh, resulting to resistance strain development and also uh, causing the relapse case. And once it is relapsed, it's going to be uh, the probability of the uh, resistance in the mycobacterium lepre that is affected by the patient will be increased. <clears throat> However, the WHO still uh, uh, convinced that if we do the MDD, then we can, uh, we can diminish the resistance among the patients. Then, <clears throat> For the resistance of the uh, drug in the mycobacterium lepre infections, it is very difficult actually to be to be test. Not like other microbes, that is very easy to be tested. As long as we have the pure culture, then we can phenotypically test in vitro, put the microbes with the uh, antibiotic, then we'll see the antibiotic will kill or not in certain concentration. But in mycobacterium lepra, because it is very notorious and in this fastidious, not really easy to be cultured, so we almost impossible to do the phenotypic testing for the susceptibility of mycobacterium lepra against uh, anti-leprosy. So uh, there, is, there are some report reporting about the mutations that may be responsible for the uh, res uh, resistance or uh, uh, resistance of the mycobacterium lepre to the uh, anti-lepre drug. 
So instead of we doing the phenotypic test, instead of we put the anti microbes with the eye microbes and see what happened, we sequence the gene and then if we found this mutation, then we can say that it might be resistance against the anti leprosy drugs. So judging for that, that in 2007, there are screening from Maluku and North Sulawesi. They're saying that the resistance against Dapson is 0.8% among the new cases. But relapse cases is 10% for Dapson, and Rivabizin is almost 20%. However, in two years later, there are increasing of the mutation of, of the Rivabizin related gene here because among 21 that the sequence there are two mutation meaning it is almost 10% also but here the Dapson among 21 only 1% only one isolate has mutations meaning it is around 5% for here 10%, 20%. Maybe the problem is this one is only small, small area is covered, but for this one, maybe wider and bigger size of the samples is involved, so the uh, results is quite different. The next disease is Jones. The one is from Visaya Tropica. It is chronic contagious disease, and it is caused by Sporocheta, Call it as Tribonema pallidum subspecies pertinue, and usually it is uh, affected children or uh, teenager less than 15 years old, and usually it is saying that it is because of uh, relatively the uh, poor hygiene. Okay, and this is a yours worldwide. Indonesia is still red there, meaning more than 10,000 cases within one year. And this is the actual rate in Indonesia reported in 2010. Uh, Frambuzia is common in Sulawesi, Papua, and also in Nusa Tenggara. Even in Jawa Timur, even in the uh, East Java, there is Frambuzia. I'm not really sure if everyone here ever seen Frambuzia patients. Can you raise your hand? One. Only one person ever seen? Two. So, meaning that almost all, all of us have not seen what this Frambusia look like. But actually, there is many in Indonesia. So, again, it is going to be a uh, shoot for the definition of the NTD, neglected tropical disease. Even the health worker doesn't really care about the uh, Frambusia. And this is the qualities. The problem for the eradication yours in Indonesia is because of the lack of clear understanding of the disease burden. Why we cannot understand the disease burden? Because there is no report. Why we, there is no report? Because the patient sometimes ha doesn't have enough access to the health facility. So they are not really in the radar of the a health worker because of that. Yeah. Difficult to reach because the population is marginalized. The standard of diagnosis is not really good because it is uh, only serological method and sometimes this serological method have cross reactivity with the syphilis and other treponema uh, diseases. So uh, aside of the diagnosis method that is really pure because also the uh, negligence of the health system in Indonesia of yours. And this is again just to remind you about the uh, Trevona pallidum, subspecies pallidum that is uh, responsible for the syphilis and other diseases. For example here, skin to skin contact. But here is sexual congenital. Sexual and congenital. This is usually children and this is uh, adult because it is a uh, sexual active uh, patient usually. Okay, and for the treatment, there are suitable treatment. There are established treatment for the yours. Uh, the newest one is the 
azithromycin based uh, treatment. Previously, we were using penicillin, tetracycline, now also azithromycin. Okay. And then, though uh, the, it is not really uh, stated in the uh, MOH report, the dengue is still the problem in Indonesia, actually. Uh, for example, here, the incident rate is around 62 per 100,000 people. Case fatality rate in 2009 is around 1%, 0 0.1%, 0.1%, meaning where if there is one, if, if there are 100 patients, one patient is die because of dengue. Okay, this is the distribution. We are here, so be careful. And you please do not get bitten by the mosquito. Yeah, do you have repellent with you? I hope so, right? Otherwise, you may import dengue from Jogja because Jogja is number two in Indonesia. Yeah. Bali, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a face of travel warning here, but actually Bali is number one in Indonesia, okay? And this is kiss number and death in Indonesia, yeah. Uh, from very, uh, around 60 to 2000, uh, the trend is increasing and increasing. And also the area where the dengue is reported. It is increasing also. And we know already that uh, in dengue, we are concerned in two sides. The anesthetic incubation period is in the mosquito, anesthetic incubation period is in the patients. So we have to concern in the vector sector and in the human vector. <coughs> this is very small survey in Yogyakarta. We have uh, four several type of dengue circulating in Indonesia. But here in Jogja, unfortunately, there is no dengue, dengue virus several type four in that time. But it is because of the, I think it is because of the sampling problem. And for the diagnosis, it is well established for the, for the dengue virus infection because uh, now we have the molecular techniques and also the antigenic, uh, antigenic, uh, for example, NS1 uh, detection method that is quite good in sensitivity and specificity. And there is another problem. We cannot develop vaccine for dengue very easy because uh, one, as I mean, as Professor uh, uh, Amin Subandrio this morning mentioned is because there are IDE, antibody dependent enhancement. So the pathogenesis of the dengue virus itself is uh, something to do with the immune response. So we have to have vaccine that is protect for four serotypes, not only one or two. Okay, the emanation should be safe and then the cause will be affordable. And the fourth problem, fourth challenge is the pathogenesis is not really clear, understood. Now debate still there are there are debate. Uh, one researcher saying that the virulence of the virus is the most important thing. But the other researcher saying the most important is the immune response. So they crawling each other even when they have seminar here uh, last year, then it is just to illustrate that the pathogenesis itself is not really clear understood. And the last thing is the lack of animal models because the, we have mouse, but the mouse when get infected by the virus, dengue virus, they are not produce the similar symptoms as human uh, dengue virus infection. So the, the only hope is using the non-primate uh, animal. So uh, for example, macaca or uh, chimpanzee. But it's going to be very expensive. And the other problem is we have to fight with the Greenpeace act, uh, activists, right, because of that. And then in Indonesia, there is uh, also a consortium for the engaged vaccine. And this kind of vaccine is developed by the centers, for example, in UGM, ITB, uh, LIPI, ONER, and another university and center of research. And <clears throat> uh, if previous 
previous speaker saying about the uh, natural product and synthetic or as a source of the uh, source of the uh, drug. So we are here working with the actinomyces as a source of the drug development. For example, here actinomyces that is already isolated from the marine and terrestrial, and uh, we tested for example here for the dengue virus. Here we can see that the this panel F is the cell that is infected by virus. So the cytotoxic uh, effect is appear there, and this is the cell that is not infected. And A, B, C, D is the one that is infected by dengue virus one, and also treat with the uh, treat with the um, secondary. Uh, metabolic secondary, secondary metabolic of the actinomycetes. So meaning that uh, we are, uh, we, 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 we can use the uh, actinomycetes as a source of the antiviral. Though antiviral approach in the dengue also debatable because we know that the virus in the, in the patient will be disappear after six days of infection. I think because I, there are red already there. So the recommendation now for the NTD in Indonesia is one, promotion for the hygiene and sanitation. It is a must, I think. The second is improve the surveillance system and monitoring and also environmental health. Increase the access of health service for everyone, health service for everyone, even in the remote area and a very pure area and improve the health, public worker, and administration, meaning the government, awareness to the NTD in Indonesia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Tribi